the most romantic city in the world, the world's fashion and culinary capital of the world. None of it would even exist without the humble settlement called Lutetia. In the 3rd century BC, there lived a small Celtic tribe. In the 3rd century AD came days of the Romans and the city was renamed as Parisi. A couple of centuries later, the legendary king of the Franks, Clovis I, established Parisi or Paris to be the capital of his country. These are ducks. French call it canard. And this is the Seine River. Siena flows through the whole country and flows directly into the Atlantic. Paris sprang up on a small island called Cite. Since then, Seine became both the main trade route and the natural line of defense. By the way, stewed duck sticks, confit de canard, are the top of the French cuisine, in my opinion. Cradle of Paris, the island of Cité, divides Seine into two branches. The two coasts of the main French river are completely different. The southern coast of Rive Gauche is the home of Notre Dame. The Sorbonne, the Latin Quarter. There are lots of students, artists, and performers. The northern coast, or Rive Droit, is the administrative business and shopping center. Commerce in Paris was always humming. The Celts, the Romans, the Franks, all of them traded here. And all that thanks to the sign, because big rivers were always the perfect means of commercial communication. And if there's money, there's life. Over the centuries, the city on sign has grown to unprecedented scale. See it yourself. The best view on the city you get from the legendary Montmartre Hill, where we are right now. Behind my back is one of Paris symbols, Sacre Cure Basilica, which was built to expiate the Paris Commune. The building is modest in size, I should say. If I was building something for my sin sins, it would be the size of a Cheops pyramid at least. Paris is quite a big city. Administratively, it is divided into 20 districts, arrondissements. They spirally radiate from the center to the severe Parisian outskirts. Paris' core consists of districts 1 to 6, its historical center, museums, art galleries, and historical sites. To live around here is highly prestigious and incredibly expensive. By the way, the population of Paris nowadays a little less than two and a half million people. Then add about the same amount of tourists coming here every year. The word tourist is also French, by the way. Frenchmen do not really adore tourists because tourists are simply not Frenchmen. And since the French once invented tourists, they came up with how to neutralize them as well. They left landscapes, malls, and hypermarkets for tourists to plunder and vanished in hundreds of small cafes, shops, and marketplaces. There are dozens of food markets in Paris. Only some of them are indoor, others buzz in the streets and squares. Local markets are the mirror of the French nation. That's where I'm thinking of looking at. You should know that Parisian markets work only in the first half of the day and only two or three times a week. The rest of the time, Parisians have to use supermarkets. They don't quite like it, although the prices are lower, but so is the quality of the food. True Parisians always go to the market when he has a choice. The French in general and the Parisians in particular are quite thrifty but bargaining is not accepted at the Paris markets. Salesmen can offer discounts only to regular customers. The rest, even the most talkative and charming, pay according to the price list. Most Parisian markets are explored by tourists long ago. So I invite you to go somewhere Parisians go themselves. It is time for our regular feature, the Global Market Dictionary. The letter B, bread. French bread starts also from B, baguette. Just imagine, there's 150,000 bakeries in Paris. And thanks to their efforts, six in the morning, the whole city is already filled with the smell of a bakery. Each year, a special contest takes place between these bakeries. Winning it is like winning the Olympics. This year, it was won by the bakery La Parisienne. Here's the proof. 
And now it's time for the champions. Meet Monsieur Miguel and Monsieur Florian. We are extremely happy to win in such a prestigious competition which involves all the Parisian bakery. Throughout the year, members of the jury were selecting baguettes from hundreds of applicants. They evaluated the length of baguette, its weight, taste, smell and crunch. The jury consisted of culinary experts and the winners of previous year's competitions. As the bakery who won this title, we are honored to deliver our baguettes to the Elysee Palace to the French President Francois Hollande. I hope that you will appreciate our baguettes as well. You cannot imagine a true Parisian without a baguette like a true Venetian without a gondola. According to statistics, half a million baguettes are sold in Paris every day. Each one is worth 1 euro 20 cents. It's the price of any baguette, the one that's going to the LC Palace or any other. The baguette contest winners don't even think about rising the prices. The Parisians are quite cheap and wouldn't overpay for baguettes just because they are somewhat special. Good day, mademoiselle. One baguette, please. Many thanks. Goodbye. Now let's do something Parisian and eat this baguette while it's hot. I imagine how Francois Hollande sits in his office and worries whether Priyanikov would enjoy his baguette. The address is Paris, 3rd arrondissement, Rue de Bretagne. Behind my back is Marche des Enfants Rouge. Going to the Parisian market alone is a waste, so I've appointed a rendezvous with one pleasant mademoiselle. Let's meet her. Waiting for someone, mademoiselle? You, sir. Take a seat. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Is this for me? Of course. I'm extremely sharp today, Kate. There's about 160 million markets in Paris. Why do you meet here? We are on the market Les Enfants Rouges, Red Children. It is the oldest indoor market in Paris. It is a strange name, Red Children, isn't it? Who are these Red Children? The reason is that in the 17th century, Margaret of Navarre founded here a boarding school for orphans. The uniforms these orphans wore were red cloaks. So it comes from these red cloaks, the color of love and compassion, that gave this place a name. What market traditions are here in France? Well, in France, the market, it's really a tradition. It's prestigious. The French often have their own salesmen. Everyone has his own fish dealer, his own meat dealer. They always ask for their advice. It is normal to ask for cooking tips if you want to cook a specific meal from what you've just bought. So in this case, the salesman at the market is not just a vendor. Of course. But he's also a culinary consultant who won't let you down. With a cup of coffee. Finish yours and let's go. I'll show you something. Good idea. I'll do it Italian style in one take. Let's go. Hmm? Let's go. Unlike busy bazaars, justling with their abyss and aromas of various spices, markets in Paris are arranged the same way as French cars. Simple and tasteful. Right at the entrance, they sell vegetables. A true Parisian cannot and does not want to live without them. The French Ministry of Health recommends to eat at least five vegetables a day. Wait a second, do you mean different types of vegetables? Of course. Well, I would suggest to mix eggplant, zucchini, peppers, and tomatoes, and then you get four vegetables in one meal. Ratatouille. Okay, once again, eggplant, zucchini. Red pepper. Pepper. Tomatoes. And tomatoes. We mix it all together. Yes. Simmer? Yes. And the French his Ministry of Health is already satisfied with us, right? Yes. Okay, you've lived here long enough. Do you follow this rule yourself? Of course. And what does the French Ministry of Health say about meat? No more than two times a week. Meat? Two times a week? Of course. With your culinary culture? Less is better in that case. Oh, how French it is. Less is better. They say, well, it's much more expensive and on a giant half-empty plate. Speaking of the Parisian markets, local butchers are something else. It is argued that the French do not have any sense of disgust for food. That's because they can eat any part of the animal and do not even consider concealing it somehow. 
Hey, you French are so lucky. Having so much good food, you have a great opportunity to cook something new and delicious every day. You're wrong about that. The French hardly cook themselves. How come? Well, during the week, they dine somewhere in cafes or in restaurants. And on weekends, they are usually too lazy to cook at home. So they go to some tavern where delicious meals that take a long time to cook are already prepared by somebody else. Ah, and here, as we see, such meals are available. Yes, here they are. That one is quite interesting. It's chicken and jelly. Very similar to jelly. The difference is that it is made from a pig's head with the use of the tongue. Unlike jelly, it's not made from bones, but a pig's skin. I see. And what do we have here? This is hogling leg. Is it already cooked? Of course. Uh, I do it already. So here we have sausages, black puddings, nothing special. Of course. And here I see one of my favorite words in the world that I can read in any language. It is terrine. Terrine is a sort of spread. The only difference is that it's not potted, but chopped into quite large pieces, because most probably it will be baked in the oven later. Sometimes they bake it into the crust of a bread or just in the dough. And over there, we have another very tasty French word. It says foie de pork, right? Confit. Yes, it is pork liver marinated and baked. Pork liver? And cooked in confit style, which means a long and tedious squish. Yes, yes, yes. You know French cuisine better than me. I just get really smart when I'm around beautiful women. French chicken and jelly, 18 euros per kilo. Roasted hogling leg, 15 euros per kilo. Marinated pork liver, 32 euros per kilo. This is a terrine made of duck, a terrine made of rabbit, all kinds of terrine. Listen, actually both terrines and spreads are made of processed meat. Yes. Although you can take a piece of meat and make a steak, how come the French started doing this? Well, you know, it is because it's a poor man's food. These are the leftovers that have been scraped from the bones, leftovers from other meals, so they can be processed in order to keep everything you can consume and not throw anything out. That's how they came up with such delicious meals that are very popular nowadays. Yeah, very popular. Actually, any kind of poor man's food is popular nowadays. Hard times, huh? Yeah, good one. Coming up next, the cheese champions. Where to buy and how to culture the best French cheese. I've heard that if you do not know nothing about cheese and wine, you can lose your French citizenship. Having a taste of the cheese hot cold tier. What do I smell? No offense. It smells like a cauliflower, really. A cauliflower which was in storage for a week. Worldwide market, we pay a visit to the largest and most famous flea market in the world. St. Juan is divided into 14 markets. Their total area is 70,000 square meters. So it is larger than the territory of Monaco. Seems to be so. The world's best textile shop offers you antique fabrics of any kind. I cannot even imagine a situation in which I could give it away. How do you call this ragged piece of... <laughs> In the last part of the program, you can see Framing Workshop number one, who bakes and how to bake baguettes in Paris for the French president and what they taste like. I imagine how Francois Hollande sits in his office and worries whether Pranica would enjoy his baguette. Private advice, where do you find the best grocery market in Paris? And what can you buy there? And what does the French Ministry of Health say about meat? No more than two times a week. Neither fish nor fowl, prime byproducts for true Parisians. It's chicken and jelly. Very similar to jelly. The difference is that it is made from a pig's head with the use of tongue. After arriving in Paris and visiting the best local bakery, the Boulevard Raspail Market and the Marais District Market, 
I am going to visit one secret place in the company of my charming guide, Catherine Kudeser. It smells familiar here. It reminds me about the vestibule of the third class sleeper at Sarang's Chepaksare. Please don't tell this to the French, they will be very offended. The smell comes from the cheese shop where we are heading right now. Cheese shop, really? I'll introduce you to Pierre there. He is a cheesemonger who teaches other cheesemongers. He will tell us a lot of interesting things about cheese. Bonjour, Monsieur. Hello. Welcome to our store. We have a very special place. There are lots of cheese shops in Paris, but there are almost no places where the cheese is not only sold, but also ages in the cellars. By the way, the French are very fond of cheese, but not all are experts in it. We all know that when the Frenchman is born, they put him in a cradle with a little block of cheese and a bottle of wine. And also, I've heard that if you do not know anything about cheese and wine, you can lose your French citizenship. By the way, that's why in France it's allowed to drink some wine before you get behind the wheel, because it's a tradition. We've got a 17th century cellar under the shop, where we have located the workshop. Let me show it to you. Ask anyone who knows the Parisians personally, if something happens in the world of groceries, they will survive it. Possibly they can live without oysters, scallops and mussels. Grinding their teeth, they will do without spreads and foie gras. But if a Parisian cheese shop would go empty, I swear to God, the new great French Revolution would start with its own guillotines, Marats, and other Dantons. Wow. This is what the French prosaically call a cellar. Our cheese shop is next to the market and Font Rouge. You could always find stables there with cows till the 1950s, so we always had fresh milk to make butter, cream, and sour cream. There's the old separator left from these times, and we even preserved the guide. Please, let's move on. Okay, you know what? Seva, to smell it? I do not know. Sava or not, but it smells. Not very Sava. It smells like the locker room in the army smelled better after we ran a marathon. Oh, well, what? It's just not for my taste. They used to say that if you're sick, you just needed to come to the cheesemonger cellar and breathe in the air. The cheese ages here, so it is important to maintain the required temperature and humidity. This is brie cheese from Moy. Brie can be made anywhere in the world, but the real brie comes only from Moy. How much does this block cost? 120 to 150 euros. The brie cheese from Moy that's near Paris average cost is 130 euros per kilo. Mandu. Pierre, I would like to know, what is the most popular cheese in France? Leonte and Camembert. Oh, Camembert, of course. The Camembert comes from Normandy and is made only from Norman milk. Many Frenchmen do not know the difference between a real Norman Camembert and a Camembert. Made in the large dairy plants where they use pasteurized milk. The Camembert from Normandy, 3 euros and 50 cents to 7 euros for a 250 gram block. You can laugh in the face of those who sell it for more. I just witnessed a block of the most proper camembert in the world, and by some reason Pierre does not allow me to touch it. Why can't you touch anything here? Cheese is alive, it ages here. Microbes and enzymes change its texture and flavor. Look, some of them are already strongly transformed. Touching them is prohibited. So we've just met a man who not only speaks to the micros, but cherishes them and knows each one by name. Time's up. The temperature rises. It is not good for the cheese. Let's go eat. Cheese tasting always goes from the most gentle to the strongest ones. Tell me, is it true that the smeller the cheese, the better it is somehow? Or it really is alive? Does the quality of the cheese depend on its strong smell? No, not at all. The microbes evolve the smell. 
Although there are microbes who can give the red crust, for example. This crust is the reason of the famous strong smell, which gave this reputation to French cheeses. But the taste is not strong at all. So there is no direct connection between the smell and the quality. Here is a goat cheese, Paulini Sempieri. Goat cheese, by the way, is always white. Cheese made from cow milk is always more yellow. This cheese comes from the Tor region. As you can see, it has a lot of mold. Tell me, should you eat the crust? Does eating the mold do any good for you? Yes, this one you don't eat, but this one you may. Okay, this crust we eat. Clear. Smell it. It's called retro breathing. Phew. Wait, second try. Ah, uh, no good. Third one? Now bite it. <laughs> Just like that? And one more thing. I've noticed different cheeses have different shapes. Is there any traditional shape for each type of cheese? And what does it depend on? It depends on the region of France where different traditions of cheesemongering develop. For example, cheesemongers from the Tour region always use the pyramid shape. Now, here we have brie cheese we've seen in the cellar. We take it and smell it. What does it smell like? What do I smell? No offense. It smells like cauliflower, really. Cauliflower, which was in the storage for a week. Okay, in one bite. Eating this kind of cheese for want of a habit, help yourself to bread. Oh, thank you, I thought you'd never offer. Like it was a special French tradition, eating cheese, looking at bread, dreaming to bite it. Thank God it's not. Pooh. Now it's much easier. Thank you. You know, until now I consider myself a smelly cheese nerd. But I never thought the smell can be that strong. In France, they have a cheese that requires you to wear a gas mask. Just kidding. Take it. Also in one bite? What do we have here? Break it in two and smell it. It smells like fruit. Everything smells like fruit after this kind of cheese. And now it's time for a traditional feature, let me speak from my heart. I was waiting to meet you for a long time. Now, I want to hear the advice from a man who consults all the French cheesemongers. How do you pick the right wine for the right cheese? There's a general rule. For a lighter cheese, you get some white wine. For this cheese, for example, and a cheese with a stronger taste requires a stronger wine. The milder the cheese flavor, the lighter the wine can be. And if the flavor is strong, try to pick a bottle of red wine with intense notes. Millions of people right now are buying and selling something. That means I have still got places to go. Alexander Pranikov from the World Market. Enchanté, bonsoir, au revoir. And good luck.